everybody, I'm the Gulf Coast Granny and welcome back to my garden. Today, my garden is taking a new direction and I'm gonna call it Gardening on the Edge. And I'll tell you why, because rules. I've always thought that there were rules to gardening. You read the back of the package, it tells you when to plant it, it tells you how many days it's gonna take to mature and give you fruit. Well, it has become very apparent to me that my garden doesn't like the rules. Two things spurred this new direction for my garden. And I'm gonna insert a couple of clips here so you can kind of get an idea of what's going on. Okay, y'all, see this seed packet? It's burgundy okra. And right, the first thing it says is 49 days. That means that it takes 49 days from planting to maturity. So I should already have some okra. So let's go see what this burgundy okra is doing. Now well, there it is. That okra is just over knee high on me. I just harvested my first okra off of that plant two days ago. I don't see any flowers, though I do see blooms. There are some blooms right there. And there's a couple of little blooms right there. Now, I planted that okra at the beginning of April. It is now the beginning of July. That's three months ago. So, this package is either wrong or okra doesn't like my yard. And here's another anomaly in my garden. Um, these bright green leaves are Kajari melons. I planted those mm, two months ago or so. These smaller leaves down here is a cantaloupe. And I planted that a few months ago. Well, I've gotten one Kajari melon and one cantaloupe. That's it. But the other day I was out here and I saw this when it was much smaller. And I wondered, what in the world is that? It looks like another Kajari melon. Well, I was out here two days ago and I saw that. Now, big old flower right there and that squash. That is a butternut squash. I planted this butternut squash two weeks before I planted the Kajari melons and the cantaloupes. It has taken at least two to two and a half months for this to come up and start producing fruit. So that's what started me thinking my garden does not follow the rules. My garden <laughs> is telling the rules to take a hike. My yard has its own little microclimate. I get maybe seven hours of sunlight a day. My garden's new and the soil has not been improved. And I know I've said all this before. The thing I haven't said is, for instance, today, the high was 92 degrees, which doesn't seem too awfully hot, but the humidity was 82%, which made the heat index 104 degrees. And it's only the first week of July. It's gonna get worse. Next month is gonna be unbearable. And September, it might start to cool off and it might not. Usually it doesn't start to cool off until October. I also have an extremely small garden, so I can't rotate the things that I need to rotate. I have to grow squash next to squash where it was grown before last year or the next year. I'll have to grow squash in close proximity, which increases pest pressure and disease pressure. Nothing in my garden is gonna be even close to organic because I do have to use pyrethrin and I do have to use uh, spinosad and I do have to use um, liquid copper for diseases. Basically what I'm saying is gardening in my yard in zone 9 especially during the summer 
is very, very hard. The upside to that is I have 12 months a year to grow. I can grow all year round, even in the cold. And honestly, the fall is the best season to grow. And all gardens have challenges, not just mine. So I'm going to be taking on the challenges. I'm going to try everything, everything I can think of in this garden, this itty bitty little garden. Um, and I'm going to see what, what likes to grow here and what doesn't. I'm going to be throwing out all the rules and I'm going to grow. And I'd like to take you guys on this ride with me. And I started just about a week ago with some, well, I'll insert the video and I'll show you guys what I've done so far to start this new direction. These four pots are the beginning of my new direction in gardening. This first pot has three patty pan squash in it. This one, I planted three zucchinis in here, but only one came up. So about three days ago, I planted that little guy as a seed, and he is up and will catch up to his partner there quickly. And yesterday, me and the Grand Millie came out here and planted pole beans in this pot. And we planted small wonder spaghetti squash in this pot. Now, when this comes up and starts vining, I'm going to have to move it over here. Because the vines are going to need a lot of room. I think I put five seeds in that bucket. Or Millie did. <laughs> so, I'm kind of excited for her to come over next week and see that her, her stuff is starting to grow. She'll be really excited about that. My next plan, since I don't have a lot of gardening space, is to put watermelons in that blue pool right there. And also to put in that bed some blue bayou pumpkins. Now, if you'll notice right now, it is 4 o'clock, 4.30, 4 or 4.30. And my yard is shaded. There's patchy, patchy sunlight across my whole garden. The sun does not hit that bed until 8.30 in the morning. So again, we're challenged here. But I'm going to see what's going to work and what's not going to work. You know, I've been watching a lot of gardening channels. And sometimes some of the prepper channels get thrown in there and I click on those. And sometimes it's the, the alarmists that, that are talking gloom and doom all the time. And there's two things that they keep saying is that we're having a food shortage. Well, you know, we, since the COVID thing, we've all been seeing that. Um, to some degree, I think the food is there for people to buy is what I'm saying. Uh, it might not be exactly what you want but there's food to buy at the stores. Also, there's something called the Grand Solar Minimum, which has to do with the cycle of the sun and sunspots, and right now there aren't a lot of sunspots or solar activity, so the premise is that there's it's been 400 years since there was a Grand Solar Minimum, and we're coming up on one, and that the climate is gonna change drastically, and that things are gonna get colder, and storms and volcanoes and all this stuff well I don't know if all of that's true or not but if it is we're gonna have to learn to grow food where we live we're gonna have to find out what likes to grow where we live so that we can eat and whether there's challenges or not so if you like this new direction that my channel's gonna take please hit the like button below. And if there's a challenge that you're having, maybe in a similar climate or, or not, leave me a comment below and tell me what you'd like to see me grow and see if I have a challenge with it. And if I do, how, how I can overcome it or how I can decide not to grow it ever again. Because <laughs> sometimes that happens in a garden. Sometimes you just have to say, okay, enough is enough. 
I've tried this so much, it's just not working here. And that's okay. Pick something else. So y'all, here's to gardening on the edge and breaking all the rules. Y'all have a great day and I'll talk to you again real soon, all right?